today's uh, presentation, I'm going to focus on uh, UNESCO's MAD program and its biosphere reserve. So a general presentation to get us started. So what are the, some of the key messages coming out of the UNESCO MAD program? Um, the MAD program develops the basis between the natural on one side and the social sciences. Uh, looking at the national, rational uh, use of resources in the biosphere and the uh, improvement between people and the environment. Now it includes both a vision for sustainable development uh, and the tools in the form of biosphere reserves for implementing Agenda 2030 and the SDGs. What are biosphere reserves? Biosphere reserves are learning places for sustainable development. There are sites for testing, interdisciplinary approaches, and understanding and managing changes and interactions between the social and ecological systems. Now, we've tried to make these uh, sites uh, as, a, as, a, as a network, to make these sites as dynamic and effective as possible. And there's been uh, quite a process that uh, the MAB uh, community has gone through to ensure that the biosphere reserves are functioning uh, in that respect. What does the Biosphere Reserve Network look like today? Uh, there are 714 Biosphere Reserves uh, as we speak, 260 million people with them, with them uh, that are present in 129 countries. 21 of those uh, Biosphere Reserves are transboundary and two of them are transcontinental. Biosphere Reserves um, cover 5% of the world's surface and their, uh, their core areas, 1% uh, of the world's surface. So really quite uh, a broad, uh, area in the world. And uh, the region that uh, we cover here uh, within uh, Europe, uh, specifically Southeast Europe and the Mediterranean, uh, we cover uh, 15 countries. Within those countries, there are 44 biosphere reserves. Uh, to compare, we also have 22 uh, geoparks and 136 World Heritage Sites, of which uh, uh, 20 are natural. So there's really a, a really interesting coverage of UNESCO sites uh, in the region. Um, Biosphere Reserve, Geoparks, and World Heritage Sites. Now, how do uh, Biosphere Reserves function? So they're made up of uh, three zones and these uh, uh, and three functions that are pursued through the, uh, the, the zonation that you see on the screen. Uh, now, how do these three zones function? There's a core area, buffer zones, and, trans and tr transition area. The core area is the protected area. So strictly protected zones uh, that contribute to the conservation of landscapes, of ecosystems, of species. Uh, and genetic variation. Uh, the buffer zone that surrounds uh, these core areas uh, and uh, are used for uh, ecologically sustainable practices. We're talking about um, research, uh, education, training, monitoring. Um, finally, the transition uh, area, which is uh, the third, uh, the lightest area in, in red blue on the screen that you see where uh, communities foster uh, economic activities that are both uh, social, culturally, and ecologically sustainable. So this is where most of the economic activities take place within biosphere reserves. As I said, uh, there are three functions that are related to the work of biosphere reserves. The first, the primary function is obviously the conservation of biodiversity, and also this extends to cultural diversity, as we'll see in, in some presentations uh, during these next three weeks. Uh, economic development I've also uh, touched upon. Uh, we need to work within the biosphere reserves to ensure that the, the jobs that are created, that people are uh, working, uh, obviously within uh, in a social, culturally, and environmentally sustainable manner. And then finally, uh, what we call the logistic function, which uh, there we're talking about uh, the research, the monitoring, the education and training, such as uh, this course uh, that we're going through uh, today. So to give you an idea of what the, the strategy is for, for MAB, because we've been going through successive strategies as, as MAB uh, um, has gone through its uh, 50 years of existence. So uh, a new strategy was adopted in 2015, which covers the 10 years, 2015, 2025. Uh, and what are the key strategic objectives for MAB during that period? To conserve biodiversity, of course, uh, to contribute to uh, building sustainable, healthy, and equitable societies uh, to facilitate the science. So the biodiversity and the sustainability science, also looking at the education for sustainable development and the capacity building. And finally, looking at the, the climate change aspects uh, and also other global environmental changes. So to achieve these objectives, uh, the MAB community has decided through its uh, council 
um, to use five uh, strategic action areas. Uh, the first action area um, refers to uh, how the uh, biosphere reserves uh, need to be models for sustainable development. Then uh, we need to look at um, uh, another action area, which relates to how the networks function properly. Finally, we need to ensure that we have you know, sustainable partners, sustainable partnerships, uh, and sustainable funding, of course, uh, to uh, implement the NAB activities. Uh, another area uh, of key importance is how we communicate about NAB, um, because unless people understand the importance of NAB and its biosphere reserves, then we can't get the buy-in that we need to, to be sustainable in the long term. And finally, um, a key area of action is to ensure that the governance of the MAP program functions properly, be it at the uh, global level through the uh, uh, MAP Council, uh, through the uh, regional networks, such as uh, Euromab in uh, European network in, in the European area, uh, and at the national level through the national network of biosphere reserves that each country has. And so these uh, action areas are translated um, into more detail. Um, uh, within the Lima Action Plan, which was ad adopted in 2016, so a year after the MAP strategy. And the, the Lima Action Plan uh, uh, looks at some of the indicators that we need to uh, fulfill if we want to achieve uh, these action areas and the strategic objectives within the, the MAP strategy. And I would encourage you to, to take a, a closer look both at the MAP strategy uh, and at the uh, Lima Action Plan, which you can find online uh, on the uh, MAP website. So just to give you an idea also of how uh, biosphere reserves uh, you know, become biosphere reserves. So the first step is the uh, nomination by member states um, of, of UNESCO. Uh, this nomination goes to the MAB Secretariat. The MAB Secretariat reviews the, uh, uh, the nomination file uh, and forwards the nomination file to uh, an advisory committee, which is made up of experts from all the different regions of the world, world which review these uh, uh, these nominations and forward them on um, and make recommendations and forward these recommendations on to the MAP Council, which then decides on a yearly basis uh, which sites will be admitted to the, uh, the MAP network. Um, uh, and during the past uh, uh, 10 years, uh, the MAP, MAP program has been in, uh, very intent on ensuring that the MAB sites uh, function as they are meant to be. And so uh, the periodic review process uh, was established so that uh, different sites were reviewed every 10 years to ensure that they're functioning uh, as per the guidelines uh, of the MAB program. And member states carry out qualitative surveys to see how the actions are being implemented, uh, looking uh, very closely at the donation system to make sure that it's relevant, uh, the management policies and improving the quality of the reserves themselves uh, uh, as they function as sites for sustainable development. Um, and in the past uh, seven, seven, eight years, uh, the MAP community has gone through a, a, a very important process um, to make sure that the sites uh, within the network are really functioning um, as, they, as they should be, that, they're more, that the sites are more visible, that they're more connected, that they're more efficient, uh, that the zonation uh, is working properly. Uh, there are quite a few technical missions that took place, cap capacity building workshops, looking at donation, governance, and management. Uh, all countries from the, the network responded to the call. Uh, Ten countries voluntarily decided to withdraw a total of 49 biosphere reserves from the network. And so, you know, we're very happy to have uh, a, a network that now really uh, uh, has within its, uh, its list of sites, sites that are um, uh, functioning uh, in a modern biosphere reserve way. Um, and so very happy with how that process has gone along. And to supplement that process, the member states also uh, asked that the working group develop technical guidelines for biosphere reserves to help uh, managers on the ground uh, to manage the sites, uh, looking both at the, both at the zonation, at the governance level, at the management and business plan level, uh, looking also at data management and monitoring, um, and uh, so the whole process, we went through a two-year process uh, developing these technical guidelines, which were um, forwarded to the council uh, at its last session uh, last month. Um, and uh, the technical guidelines are available also on the website. 
and I'd encourage you to, to take a look at those. Uh, that's a very, very useful tool for the management of biosphere reserves um, at, the, at, the, at the local level. Um, we've also asked, the, the, the council has also asked member states to continue to nourish the technical guidelines uh, with the examples of, um, um, and best practices of how the technical guidelines can be implemented at the local level. As I noted, the communication has been really an important aspect of, uh, of the MAP program, has become a really important aspect of the MAP program uh, in the past years, uh, just because we want, to, in many cases, people living in biosphere reserves don't realize that they're living in biosphere reserves, don't realize the importance of biosphere reserves, the, the, the important role the sites could play uh, in their life. And so uh, we've uh, launched a Proud to Share video campaign um, since 2017. Uh, which I'm going to talk about in a subsequent uh, presentation. Also, the website has been redone, and many you know different exhibitions have taken place to to, to highlight the importance of NAV uh, to its member states. And this brings us to the last couple of slides I have for today. I want to talk about the 50th anniversary of UNESCO, which is happening. Uh, sorry, of, uh, of the MAP program of UNESCO, which is happening uh, next year, uh, and some of the different activities that we want to promote um, as a, as, a, as a community. Uh, so there's proposals from the Secretariat, but of course this is something that we want to do uh, as a community at large. So we're talking about the member states, uh, both at the, the delegations uh, at UNESCO, but also uh, the national commissions of UNESCO, uh, the MAP committees, uh, focal points around the world, uh, the donors and partners that we're working with in the UN system, and obviously at the territorial level, very important to involve everybody that's working in biosphere reserves. Uh, and very, very important to involve youth and young people, which are the future of the program and which have really taken a key role in the program in the past, in the past few years, as we'll see in week three of the university. And finally, working obviously with the universities and, and the, our scientific community. So some of the, the, the key things that the secretary is gonna promote are video messages from the director general, special web page, a database platform, uh, hopefully exhibition for public spaces, which are, able to, uh, to walk around uh, as we used to before COVID-19. Um, a, a book on MAB, uh, which will be um, uh, done next year, working very closely with the MAB youth communities, as I said, uh, developing educational materials and working on multimedia um, content. So I would very much encourage uh, uh, everyone involved in this, in this uh, hybrid university to, to take a, a lead role in, um, in the celebrations of the 50th anniversary for MAB next year. It's an opportunity for to get involved, to get more involved if you're already involved. And so I'd really uh, encourage you to um, to do that, both taking, you know, getting in touch with your, your national MAP committee. Uh, you can come through us here at the Regional Bureau and also the MAP Secretariat in Paris, obviously. So I look forward to uh, collaborating with you on this 50th uh, anniversary, which will really be a celebration of everything that we've done uh, together during the past uh, 50 years. So I'd like to stop there. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, for your attention, um, and uh, uh, I'll be uh, seeing you very soon as the hybrid university uh, unfolds. Thank you very much.